Topic: A bomb. Topic: Abomination. Topic: Abraxas. Abraxas, sometimes called the Dark Man, is a cosmic entity who embodies the destruction of the Marvel multiverse. The existence of Galactus prevents him from emerging. The character, created by Carlos Pacheco, first appeared in Fantastic Four Annual 2001, September 2001. Topic: <laughs> Absorbing Man. Topic Abyss Topic Nils Steiger Nils Steiger, a mutant who is the son of Azazel and the half brother of Nightcrawler. An alternate universe's counterpart of the character first appeared in X Men Alpha, and the heroic Marvel Universe version of the character first appeared in Cable Vol. 2, No. 40. Abyss was created by Scott Lobdell, Mark Wade, Roger Cruz, and Steve Epting. Neil Steiger first appeared as a protector for Genocean researcher Rene Majkum, whom he had been assisting with research into the legacy virus from which Abyss suffered. However, he did not die due to the actions of Colossus, who sacrificed himself to release an airborne cure to the virus which had taken his little sister Ileana's life several years prior. Abyss was later seen in Berlin, Germany battling the former Jean Nation member known as Fever Pitch. Both mutants were captured by Banshee's mutant militia known as the Tenth Corps. While being held by the Tenth Corps, Abyss witnessed Sunpire's murder. When the terrorist Mystique revealed herself and her intentions to use the Tenth Corps, the wounded Banshee freed Abyss from his confinement. Abyss then sucked Mystique through his interdimensional void, and, unable to shut off his power, almost swallowed Banshee also. The timely arrival of some other members of Tenth Corps stopped that however. Abyss admitted that he had no idea where Mystique was transported to or if she would ever return. Abyss later resurfaced when his father Azazel psychically summoned his many children to attempt to release his army from the brimstone dimension that he had been banished to hundreds of years before. He was subsequently revealed to be Nightcrawler's half brother, as both were sons of Azazel. Abyss is one of scores of mutants who lost their powers after the events of the House of M. Abyss is a member of the X Cell, a group of X mutants who blame the government for the power loss of mutants. He was repowered by Quicksilver. When the side effects of the Terrigan Mist began to take effect, he flung Fatal and Reaper into the Brimstone Dimension and followed them. It was later discovered that the three of them were frozen within the Brimstone Dimension. AIM scientist Dr. Terence Hoffman later used a machine to extract Abyss, Fatal, and Reaper from the Brimstone Dimension and drained them of their energies. After the three X mutants were rescued and Dr. Hoffman was defeated, Abyss remained silent as Fatal and Reaper vowed to make Quicksilver pay for their near death through the Terrigan crystals. Abyss is a mutant who can unwind his body into highly tensile strands that can be stretched or used to ensnare a victim. While holding them, he can absorb anything within the shadowy confines of his form, akin to what the superhero known as Cloak does. His body is actually a portal to the same dimension that Nightcrawler temporarily enters when he teleports, later dubbed the Brimstone Dimension, from the side effect of Nightcrawler's powers. He is able to drain the life force of the captives he holds in his form and can deposit him in this dimension permanently, but it is unknown if anything can survive there. He has limited psionic empathy, able to feel the emotions of people contained within him and those in his immediate vicinity. Artists often differ in the way that they portray Abyss, in fact his appearance has drastically changed within single story arcs, though no other character seemed to think this was odd. Sometimes Abyss will have a green face and a black body, while other times he will be blue and have a body structure similar to Flatman. During the storyline, the Draco, Abyss appeared very similar to Nightcrawler, though he was depicted as being the age of a young teenage boy.
Topic: <inaudible> Abyss. The third Abyss debuts in Avengers Volume 5 number 1. She was created by Jonathan Hickman and Jerome Opener. She is composed of living gas and is invulnerable to harm. She also has the ability to suggest ideas and manipulate certain beings into acting the way she wants. She appeared during the events of Marvel Now. This version is a female who is the ally of a mysterious and powerful being called Ex Nihilo and assisted in a plot to bring a breathable atmosphere and vegetation to Mars. In a prelude to the Infinity storyline, Ex Nihilo, Abyss, Nightmask, and Star Brand join the Avengers. Other versions of Abyss Before his introduction in the mainstream Marvel Universe, a variant of Abyss appeared in the alternate timeline Age of Apocalypse. He was one of Apocalypse's horsemen, a nihilist with a warped sense of humor. This Abyss has a slightly different appearance but essentially the same powers. Abyss was rumored to have been a prisoner of Sinister's breeding pens, from which he broke out. But instead of rebelling against Apocalypse, he joined his forces, attaining the rank of horseman after killing Bastion. Abyss became attached to the religious institutions of Apocalypse's regime, the Brotherhood of Chaos and the Madri. He joined them in their attack against refugees escaping from North America and was defeated by Quicksilver and Storm. Seeking revenge, Abyss faced Banshee and Quicksilver at the Temple of the Madri, though Abyss died when Banshee sacrificed himself by flying inside of the Horseman's Void and activating his powers. <laughs> <laughs> Video games Abyss appears as one of Apocalypse's Horsemen in X-Men Legends 2, Rise of Apocalypse, voiced by Quinton Flynn. Topic Access Topic Achebe Topic Adam X Adam X, also referred to as X Treme and Adam Neramani, is a mutant in the Marvel Universe. The character, created by Fabian Nicieza and Jeff Johnson, first appeared in X Force Annual No. 2, October 1993. Within the context of the stories, Adam X is a half human and half Shi'ar who possesses the mutant ability to ignite the oxygen in another person's blood. He initially encounters X Force while he is working for Martin Strong. Initially unaware of Strong's connection to Project Wide Awake, Adam eventually works with X Force when the full extent of Strong's plans are revealed. The character has made sporadic appearances since then with little background added. Some overall plot threads from the X Men related titles were touched on, such as Mr. Sinister being interested in Adam X, and the former Shia Emperor Deacon being his father. The character was also an aspect of the third Summer's brother plot element. When introduced, Adam X was thought by readers to be the son of Catherine Summers and Shia Emperor Deacon. While this origin was never confirmed in the comics themselves, Adam is half human, and Catherine was the only known human woman in Shia space at the time. X-Men Vol. 2, No. 39, December 1994, featured a story about Adam discovering Philip Summers, father of Christopher Summers and grandfather of Cyclops and Havoc, in the Alaskan wilderness and feeling an unusual connection to the old man. Nicieza later confirmed that he intended Adam X to be the half-brother of Cyclops and Havoc. Adam X was intended to be the illegitimate offspring of Deacon and Kate Summers. Taken from Deacon and raised on a farming planet. But and it's a big but since I never had the opportunity to tell the entire story, what I intended is worth the screen it's printed on. Topic Aegis. Topic Lady of All Sorrows. 
Aegis is a fictional character, a cosmic entity appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. The character is usually depicted as an enemy of Galactus. Created by writer Keith Giffen and artist Andrea DeVito, the character first appeared in Annihilation, Silver Surfer No. 3 August. 2006. She is a member of the Proamial Gods and an ally of fellow member, Tenebris. Shortly after the Big Bang of the Marvel Universe, the Proamial Gods arose from the very universe itself, collectively existing to maintain the cosmic consonants between order and chaos in the universe and to prepare what exists for what is to come. Individually, each Proamial God became a caretaker of a specific universal mechanism, with Aegis of All Sorrows being tasked with culling the living universe of divergences and aberrations. Over time the universe evolves, and life forms begin to populate the cosmos. As each unique life form enacts decisions and choices, cosmic consonance as a whole is served. This ultimately renders the Proamial Gods unnecessary. One of the Proamial Gods, Diableri of Chaos, convinces many of his brethren—including Aegis and Tenebris—to prevent their obsolescence by a plan to remake the universe in his image. Civil war ensues among the Proamial gods, and eventually Diableri and his allies bring the battle to Galactus. Galactus slays Diableri, and imprisons Aegis, along with Tenebris and possibly the neutral Antiphon the Overseer. Within the KYLN, the events of the Annihilation Wave find the KYLN prison facility compromised, allowing Aegis and Tenebris to escape. Meanwhile, Thanos a Titan is tasked by Annihilus, the orchestrator of the Annihilation Wave, to discover the secret of the power cosmic. Thanos approaches Tenebris and Aegis and forms an alliance with them against their common enemy, Galactus. Aegis, Tenebris, and Thanos engage and defeat Galactus and the Silver Surfer in battle, delivering them to Annihilus for experimentation. After the events of the Annihilation Wave, Aegis and Tenebris return to the KYLN, discovering the carcass of Antiphon. Galactus, having escaped from containment, seeks to bring a final close to the ambitions of Aegis and Tenebris. Galactus sends the Silver Surfer ahead, and the Herald decides to maneuver them into the nearby crunch barrier that separates the universe from the negative zone. Overwhelmed by the crunch energies, both Aegis and Tenebris seemingly met their deaths, despite their apparent deaths during the aftermath of the Annihilation War. Which may or may not be explained away as merely the destruction of their M bodies. Aegis and Tenebris reappear alongside Galactus and the Celestials, fighting against the forces of the Cancerverse. During this battle, which according to the Silver Surfer is occurring on multiple levels of reality not visible to most lesser beings, Aegis is apparently overwhelmed by the cosmic forces of the Cancerverse and destroyed. Which in future issues, as with other cosmic abstracts, may again be written off as the destruction of the M body. Although the full extent of her powers is unknown, Aegis possesses cosmic abilities similar to that of other Proamial gods, and has been described as a possessor of power on par with Galactus. Aegis has displayed concussive force sufficient to incapacitate Galactus, make instant hyper jumps throughout the universe, and cosmic awareness. Topic. Trey Jason Rollins Aegis Trey Rollins is a member of the superhero team New Warriors. The character, created by Jay Fairber and Steve Scott, first appeared in New Warriors Vol. 2 No. 0 in June 1999. Teenager Trey Rollins finds a magical breastplate, the Aegis. He creates a costumed identity and begins calling himself Aegis. He decides to use his newfound abilities to protect his neighborhood from gangs and criminals, becoming a hero to the kids in Brooklyn. He later helps the new warriors defeat Blastar and joins the group. Later, Athena reveals herself as the one who gave Aegis the breastplate, and he becomes her official champion. During the superhero Civil War, an unregistered Aegis, being pursued by S.H.I.E.L.D. operatives, is offered sanctuary with X Factor but declines. He later complies with the Registration Act. Aegis is killed during a fight with the Huntsman when the breastplate fails to protect him after jumping out of a 12 story window. 
Huntsman was acting on behalf of Hera, the source of the Aegis breastplate's power after Zeus' death. He later appears in Erebus, a casino where souls try to win a chance at resurrection. He helps Hercules save Zeus from his imprisonment by Hades and accompanies Amadeus Cho to the Elysian Fields. Aero <laughs> Hero Lei Ling is a fictional Chinese superhero appearing in the Marvel Universe. The character was created for the Chinese market by artist Kang and writer Zhou Lifan in a collaboration between Marvel Comics and Netiaze. After debuting in Chinese digital comics, Aero made her American comics debut in War of the Realms, New Agents of Atlas before starring in her own series. Her series features translations of the original Chinese comics and new material by Greg Pak teaming up with Wave. Lei Ling is an architect in Shanghai, China. As Aero, she has the ability to harness the power of the air. Agamemnon Agamemnon is a half-human, half-Asgardian. He was born immortal, and though he never physically aged beyond the age of 16 although he employs holograms to appear as an old man, the Pantheon members are all his descendants, Achilles, Ajax, Andromeda, Atalanta, Cassiopeia, Delphi, Hector, Jason, Paris, Perseus, Prometheus, and two characters named Ulysses. He recruited the Pantheon, stationed in the Nevada desert-based headquarters called the Mount. Heller once called him Varley Harfling. Aside from being immortal, he does not appear to have superhuman powers. He is a master in analyzing and forecasting the future development of social structures, as well as a master battle strategist and an excellent hand to hand combatant. He also has access to the highly advanced technology produced by the Pantheon scientists and craftsmen. Since the revelation that he is Loki's son, he has also demonstrated knowledge of magic and spell casting. Though he does not appear to have any innate magic ability, he has shown skill in employing magical artifacts and rituals. Topic: <laughs> Agamotto. Topic: <laughs> Agent Orange Agent Orange Roger Goshaw, is a minor character in Marvel Comics. The character, created by Howard Mackey, Ben Schwartz and Andrew Curry, first appeared in Captain America and Nick Fury, Blood Truce No. 1 February 1995. As part of a rogue faction of S.H.I.E.L.D. operatives determined to undermine a delicate international situation, he uses an exoskeleton designed by Iron Man but is defeated by Captain America and Nick Fury. <laughs> Agent Orange in other media Agent Orange is used on The Punisher as a codename for William Rawlins portrayed by Paul Schultzer. Agent X Agina Agony Agony is the name used by a symbiote in Marvel Comics. The symbiote, created by David Michelini and Ron Lim, first appeared in Venom, Lethal Protector No. 4 May 1993, and was named in Carnage, USA. No. 2 March 2012. The Agony symbiote is one of five symbiote children, forcefully spawned from the Venom symbiote alongside four other symbiotes, Riot, Phage, Lasher and Scream. Agony's first host was Leslie Gesneria, a mercenary hired by Carlton Drake's Life Foundation in San Francisco. Leslie bonded with the Agony symbiote in conjunction with Scream Donna Diego, Phage Carl Mack, Riot Trevor Cole, and Lasher Ramon Hernandez. Agony and her four symbiote siblings are defeated by Spider-Man and Venom. The symbiotes 
siblings later kidnap Eddie Brock out of prison in an attempt to communicate with their alien symbiotes in Chicago. When Eddie refused to aid, Leslie was killed with a sonic knife. The others were initially misled into thinking Brock was picking the group off, but Scream, having snapped from Donna's schizophrenia and the Scream symbiote's influence, was the killer. The Agony symbiote later merged with three other symbiotes, Phage, Lasher, and Riot, into the hybrid symbiote, until a military group later separated the four symbiotes for the U.S. government. Agony's second host was James Murphy, a petty officer assigned the Agony symbiote within the Mercury Team Special Force. When Carnage is loose in Colorado, James trained with the Agony symbiote for months in specific tasks alongside Phage Rico Axelson, Lasher Marcus Sims, and Riot Howard Ogden. Unfortunately, James and his teammates were later killed by Carnage in their secret base. However, the Agony symbiote and the other three symbiotes bonded to Deadpool to fight Carnage, and then bonded with Mercury Team's dog, the sole survivor of Carnage's attack against the task force after the fight. Topic: <laughs> Agony in other media. Agony Leslie Gesneria appeared as a boss character in Spider-Man and Venom, Separation Anxiety. The Agony symbiote appears as an alternate design for hybrid Scott Washington in Marvel, Avengers Alliance. Agony Leslie Gesneria appears as a playable character in Spider-Man Unlimited. An Agony-esque symbiote appears as an Easter egg in the 2018 film Venom under the designation Sim A02. Topic Ahab Topic AIAPAEC Topic Aida Aida Artificial Intelligence Data Analyzer is a fictional computer system in Marvel Comics. The character, created by Mark Gruenwald and Bob Hall, first appeared in Squadron Supreme No. 1 September 1985. Created by Tom Thumb, Aida was a computer imbued with artificial intelligence. Thumb gave it a female personality and would often flirt with his creation. Aida was also the only person who knew of Tom's cancer diagnosis. Aida eventually tells Apex, but it's of no use as Tom resigns himself to his own fate. Aida and Apex try to create a robot duplicate of her creator but this endeavor is abandoned. <laughs> Aida in other media Aida appeared in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as Artificial Intelligent Digital Assistant, voiced by Amanda Ray in Season 3's Ascension, and portrayed by Mallory Jansen in Season 4 as a life model decoy. This version is Holden Radcliffe's AI assistant. After Radcliffe was cleared of all charges regarding the Inhumans, Radcliffe celebrated by giving Aida a new body. She was later introduced to Leo Fitz with her purpose being to serve as a realistic target for SHIELD's enemies. In Deals with Our Devils, Aida reads the Darkhold in order to rescue Fitz, Phil Coulson and Robbie Reyes when they are stuck in between dimensions and begins developing an unusual behavior. In Boom, Aida's physical appearance is revealed to be based on Agnes Kitsworth, a woman with whom Radcliffe once had a close relationship. Radcliffe left her when he was unable to operate on her brain tumor. Coulson attempts to find Radcliffe through Agnes, but she accepts Radcliffe's offer to be put in the framework as her tumor takes its toll. Aida kills Radcliffe after realizing that he was a potential danger to the framework, exploiting a flaw in his commands, though Aida downloads his consciousness as a way of protecting him. She later revives a gravely injured Anton Ivanov by turning him into an LMD. In What If? Aida has taken control of the framework as Madame Hydra and is well aware of her alternate identity, referring to the real world as the other place. In Farewell, Cruel World, 
She reincarnates herself as a human being in the real world with various inhuman abilities and a weak hold on her human emotions. When she is rejected emotionally by Fitz, whom she had made her lover in the framework, she begins a murderous rampage and plots to create a new fascist regime like that of the framework. Aida is finally killed after Coulson uses Ghost Rider's powers and immolates her. Aereo <laughs> 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 Topic Airstrike Topic Airwalker Topic Ajack Topic Ajax Topic Pantheon Ajax first appeared in The Incredible Hulk number no. 379, March 1991, and was created by writer Peter David and artist Dale Keown. Ajax is a member of the Pantheon, and is one of the descendants of the immortal Agamemnon, along with Achilles, Atalanta, Cassiopeia, Delphi, Hector, Paris, Perseus, Prometheus, and Ulysses. Ajax was born in Texas. He was named after Ajax, a Greek warrior who fought in the Trojan War, when the warriors of the Pantheon first encounter the Hulk, for the purpose of inviting him to join them, Ajax attacks the Hulk after he believes the Hulk has struck Atalanta, for whom Ajax bears an unrequited crush. To prevent injuries to nearby civilians, Hulk pretends to be rendered unconscious so that the Pantheon will take him captive. When the Pantheon returns to their headquarters, the Mount, the formerly captive Hulk frees himself, and Ajax fights him again but this time is defeated by him. After the Hulk accepts the Pantheon's offer to join him Ajax attacks him again, but Atalanta, to whom Ajax is submissive, tells him that the Hulk is now a member of the Pantheon, and that he must now regard him as a friend. Ajax serves on many of the Pantheon's missions while the Hulk is part of the team. Ajax fights rioters in New York City alongside Atalanta, killing some of them because his companion ordered this. Alongside the Hulk and the Pantheon, he battles S.H.I.E.L.D. and the forces of Farnok Dan in the Trans-Sable War, and battled the People's Protectorate. After Atalanta is injured Ajax visits her in the Mount's Hospital. He battles Drachis alongside the Pantheon, and is badly burned in a fight with the UFOs. When he discovered Atalanta and Achilles in a romantic interlude, Ajax flies into a jealous rage, threatening to hurt both of them. He is eventually restrained and calmed by the Hulk. Ajax is so massive that he cannot move quickly without a special exoskeleton battle suit, which grants him superhuman strength, durability, and reflexes. His strength increases as his anger builds, much like that of the Hulk. Like other members of the Pantheon, Ajax has a fast healing ability and an extended lifespan. Without support from his battle suit, Ajax's legs and spine would collapse under his tremendous weight. His body is disproportionate in shape. He also has poor vision. He has the mentality of a young child, making him sometimes difficult to control. Atalanta has always been able to calm him down, as he idolizes her and will do anything she says. Of course, this sometimes leads to other problems. For a time, he did not understand the difference between romantic love and platonic friendship love and this drove him into a rampage, where he even threatened Atalanta herself. The rampage was ended before anyone was seriously hurt, in Pantheon terms, or killed. Ajax took his rage out on an inanimate mountain, not realizing he was endangering himself as well. The Hulk managed to talk him into calming down. The Hulk has also gotten into trouble when he fails to treat Ajax with the proper mind frame. At first he attacks Ajax again when he mistakes a simple hug for another threat against Atalanta. Then the Hulk let it slip that Bambi's mother had died, distressing Ajax who had been told, by Atalanta, she had run away and come back after the movie had ended. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Francis Fanny. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Albert. Albert is a fictional character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. The character is usually depicted as an ally of Wolverine and is a sapient automaton or android. Albert first appeared in Wolverine Vol. 2 No. 37 suspended in a tank of liquid and officially appeared in Wolverine Vol. 2 No. 38 where he was created by Larry Harmer and Mark Silvestri. Albert is a robot double of Wolverine who was created along with his counterpart LCD by Donald Pierce. These androids were designed to kill Wolverine. The Wolverine double was to act as the bait and LCD, who outwardly appears to be a five-year-old girl, was to trap Wolverine in a burning building, where she would detonate with sufficient force to kill him. Initially, Albert had a primitive artificial brain with limited higher logic functions and no emotions, and he was not referred to as Albert, but as dummy. Pierce's plan to kill Wolverine failed because one of the Reavers, Bonebreaker, accidentally gave LCD the maximum artificial intelligence one of Pierce's automatons was capable of. As a result, LCD eventually found a way to defuse her detonation sequence and enhance the primitive intelligence of her counterpart, giving him intelligence beyond even hers. It was at this point that Elsie named him Albert, after Albert Einstein. Having met Wolverine, he and LCD decided that he was a noble person and did not deserve to die and consequently abandoned their mission. As Albert still wasn't strong enough to defeat Wolverine, he and LCD continued to carry out their mission. While LCD saved Wolverine while they were in a burning building, Albert went to an electronic store and hacked into NASA's supercomputers to find a way to crack Donald Pierce's programming. After crunching the numbers and sending them to LCD, Albert is shot by the police for raiding the electronic store. Albert rebuilt himself in the police evidence locker and stole a steel bomber. Then he reconnected with LCD. The two robots risked their artificial lives several times for each other and for Wolverine. At some point they traveled in time and had several adventures, even teaming up with Wolverine's old enemy Bloodscream. Albert gains a leadership role with a local Indian tribe during the Hunt for Wolverine storyline. Albert was mentioned in Daredevil's discussion with NUR as one of the Wolverines that they are not looking for. In Saskatchewan, someone that looks like Wolverine massacres the forest rangers and injured people at Ranger Outpost 9 at Meadow Lake Provincial Park. When Daredevil, Misty Knight, NUR, and Cypher arrive to investigate the sighting, Cypher is attacked the Wolverine-like character. When Daredevil confronts the character on top of the Attilan Security Force Skycharger, he discovers that it is Albert as Daredevil recalls his history. During the fight with Albert, Daredevil is asked what he did with LCD. It took the weapons of Misty Knight, NUR, and a recovered Cypher to deactivate Albert. The four of them left an anonymous tip for the Canadian authorities on where to find him. Albert was superhumanly strong, could interface directly with computers, and had an intellect greater than his designer, Donald Pierce. Albert had three retractable claws on each hand, just as Wolverine, but not adamantium. Albert not only had technological knowledge centuries beyond conventional science which he was capable of making significant progress in, but also perfect photographic recall and profuse knowledge of even the most obscure facets of history. Albert reinforced his construction with bulletproof armor and stole a stealth fighter, which he and LCD may still be in possession of. Although Albert was initially designed to fight Wolverine he had limited fighting skills. In Exiles No. 85 the Time Broker gathered multiple teams, each full of Wolverines, to finish the repairing of the broken realities. The last team he gathered consisted a version of Albert and LCD from Earth 50211. The first mission of the team was to kill an evil Magneto female who melded with that world's Wolverine, Quicksilver female, Scarlet Warlock male Scarlet Witch, and Mesmero female, and already captured and manipulated dozens of Wolverines from the previous teams. 
When they've arrived they were ambushed immediately and both of them were captured, as well as two of their teammates, Albert appears in Wolverine, Adamantium Rage. Alchemy Alchemy Thomas Jellybeans Jones, is a fictional British mutant appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. Alchemy, created by British comic book fan Paul Betso, was the winning entry of a contest held by Marvel Comics for the best fan-created character. Marvel agreed to publish the winning character in an issue of New Mutants. However, Alchemy eventually first appeared in X Factor, first series number 41 instead. Thomas Jellybeans Jones was still a teenager when his mutant powers first manifested. With little control over his powers, Thomas could turn objects he touched into gold. This drew the attention of the Troll Associates, a group of trolls. Centuries ago, trolls had been driven underground by humanity, but the Troll Associates wanted to reclaim the British Isles for their kind. The Troll Associates kidnapped Thomas and told him to create an abundance of gold to collapse the British economy, but Thomas refused to comply. Meanwhile, Thomas's mother had witnessed her son's abduction by the trolls and thought that the trolls were mutants. She called X Factor for help. X Factor tracked down the trolls, following a trail of gold that Thomas had left behind, but the trolls defeated and imprisoned X Factor. The trolls then tried to force Thomas to obey by threatening his mother. To protect his mother, Thomas turned the leaders of the Troll Associates, Fi and Fee, into gold. The Troll Associates retreated and Thomas then turned the Golden Trolls into lead, to avoid the aforementioned economic problems. X Factor placed the leaden trolls in Hyde Park as statues. Thomas decided to study biochemistry so that he could restore the leaden trolls back to normal. A few years later, the Troll Associates kidnapped Alchemy's mother. Alchemy was forced to obey them, but he secretly called X Factor for help. His call was forwarded to the X Men. On their way to restore the leaden trolls back to normal, the Troll Associates and Alchemy ran into Excalibur. The two groups fought and Alchemy turned Captain Britain and Megan into gold. The X-Men met up with Excalibur and together they tracked down the trolls, but both groups were captured. Excalibur leader Nightcrawler managed to convince the majority of the trolls that the Troll Associates' methods were wrong. He challenged the new leader of the Troll Associates, Foe, to single combat, while Excalibur and the X-Men freed themselves. Foe then tried to kill Alchemy's mother, but Nightcrawler saved her and Alchemy turned Foe into a golden statue. Alchemy then revealed to Excalibur and the X-Men that due to his biochemistry studies, he could now restore humans back to normal and restored Captain Britain and Megan. Alchemy is one of a handful of mutants to retain their powers after the events of the House of M. Alchemy was instrumental to Cyclops' plan to save the mutant race by transmuting the Terrigan clouds into a substance that is not harmful to mutants or humans. He was able to successfully transmute one of the clouds, but succumbed to Terrigan poisoning immediately afterwards. Alchemy has the ability to alter the chemical composition of anything he touches into its elemental components. He can also change matter into other forms so long as he fully understands the physical composition of the desired result. In his first appearance, he could only change objects into simple chemical elements, usually gold. Due to his study of biochemistry, he can now also change objects into more complex molecules, allowing him to change transmuted living beings back to normal. Topic: Alex. Topic: Abdul Al Hazred. Abdul al Husrad, Abd al Hazd, also going by the aliases The Mad Arab, Death God, and Master, is a fictional supervillain appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. He was first adapted into a Marvel character in Marvel's adapted comic of Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan. This comic series took place within the Bull, according to the official handbook to the Marvel Universe, Mystic Arcana. 
He is an enemy of Tarzan and Wolverine in the Marvel Universe. The character is not to be confused with an existing fictional character created in 1921 by writer H. P. Lovecraft for his short story, The Nameless City, even though they have the same name and nickname. Al Hazred's origins are unknown, but it has been discovered that he was first the leader of a small band of slaves in the desert. Starting to rebel due to his cruel force over the group, the slaves fought the powerful ruler but were defeated. However, the Arab was wounded, and, because of only a small bit of self-reliance, the group abandoned their leader and left him to die in the middle of the Sahara. Soon he stumbled upon a mystic rock, and became trapped inside a tiny dimensional realm in subterranean Earth, where he died, though his soul later blended with another being, a reptilian species in that same realm. Later on, his soul escaped from the creature and managed to escape the rock, bonding to a nearby host who gained all of his former traits, not counting his appearance. Al Hazrat soon gained control over a new group of slaves whom he forced to take an entrance through a large but dark cave, and into the dimension. Al Hazrat had destroyed the rock by throwing it at the back of a cave, which opened a portal to the realm to gather a valuable crystal found only in the realm. One of the slaves grew afraid and ran back out the entrance, and he was slaughtered by Al Husrid. Tarzan had spotted this, and he ran to fight the menace and avenge the slave, but could not. Later that day, Al Husrid captured an African princess to serve as a sacrifice into the portal. Seeing this, Tarzan gathered up a band of criminals hoping to stop this madness, but they were all captured by the Arab. As the group journeyed into the cave, Tarzan and the princess secretly escaped, but the rest of the criminals eagerly accompanied Al Husrid. When the princess was nowhere to be found, as she and Tarzan were already long gone across the sea, when the sacrificial ceremony was held, the group went out looking for the two. Al Husrid summoned all of his magical traveling abilities, and soon he was able to track down his prey. The group traveled over the Atlantic Ocean and battled pirates. After the end of the voyage, the exhausted group journeyed to the jungle of Maha, but they were too late. Tarzan and the princess had already arrived to find a crystal very similar to the one in Al Husred's dimension. When Al Husred and his group were spotted, Tarzan and the princess took revenge on the ruler, and even the criminals suddenly turned on him. It was then that a battle was fought. While Tarzan battled the Arab, the princess tried to find a way to seize the crystal, but she was killed by a mad slave prisoner. While the battle went on against Al Husrid, the mad Arab finally had enough and quickly created a stampede of dinosaurs from mystical energy. After this trick had seemingly not harmed Tarzan, Al Husrid decided to make him the sacrifice. The crystal was meanwhile losing energy, and it needed more to be stable. The crystal quickly then drained all energy from the powerful Arab, and the man crumbled into ashes. Abdul al Husred sought control of the Madripur criminal empire of Tiger Tiger, so he could overthrow Prince Baran and gain a new power base. Al Husred sent agents to kidnap Tiger and Archie Corrigan, but the thugs argued, causing them to crash their plane in Madripur's jungles. There, Wolverine defeated them and rescued the pair. The X Man said he was not familiar with Al Husrid and respected his power. Later, Al Husrid himself attacked and beat Wolverine, then successfully kidnapped Tiger and Corrigan. When Wolverine arrives to free his allies, Al Husrid unleashed his demons, hoping to send Wolverine into a rage, which Al Husrid could use to control the mutant. Logan resisted by maintaining control of himself and caused the psychic backlash to banish Al Husrid to the extradimensional demon realm. Abdul Al Husrid has a seemingly endless number of mystical, magical, and psionic abilities. He can teleport in a cloud of smoke and powerfully hypnotize others. He possesses massive strength and durability, making him bulletproof. As a master of the Necronomicon, he summons demons to attack others physically or mentally, and forcefully use fear and intimidation to control his servants. <laughs> Alkhema Alkhema is a villainous robot in the Marvel Comics universe. 
The character, created by Roy Thomas, Dan Thomas, David Ross, and Tim Dizon, first appeared in Avengers West Coast No. 90, January 1993. Roy Thomas said he created her because he wasn't wild about Joe Castor, the first bride of Ultron. The name comes from the word alchemy. Her alias, War Toy, is from a story Roy Thomas had had Tony Isabella write for Unknown Worlds of Science Fiction years earlier. Ultron 13 constructs Alchema as a second attempt to create a mate, basing her on Mockingbird's brain pattern. She is composed of adamantium and therefore virtually indestructible. She is destroyed by Hawkeye. Topic: <laughs> All American. All-American Jack Magniconte, who has also been called Mr. Magnificent is a fictional character published in the New Universe imprint of Marvel Comics. He was the central figure of Kickers, Inc., and when that title was discontinued he became a supporting character in other New Universe titles. When the New Universe was brought into the mainstream Marvel Universe, he was one of the characters featured. Jack Magniconte was the star quarterback for the New York Smashers, dubbed Mr. Magnificent by the press. His brother Steve, who had raised him, designed a machine to enhance muscle mass and borrowed money from a loan shark to build the device. Jack was one of the people who was affected by the radiation of the White Event, a then unexplained cosmic event which caused a small percentage of the human race to develop superhuman powers. Jack's powers, however, did not manifest until he volunteered to test his brother's intensifier. Upon first exposure, Jack's hair turned white and his muscle mass and stamina were increased to a superhuman level. At first thrilled, Jack discovered that football no longer held any challenge for him, and he began trying to wear himself out before games in an attempt to give his opponents a sporting chance. Meanwhile, Steve's intensifier was not having any measurable result on other test subjects. Steve was unable to pay the loan shark back, so the loan shark suggests that he have Jack throw the Super Bowl instead. Steve did not even ask his brother to do so, and Jack won the Super Bowl easily although by this time it meant nothing to him. Jack came to visit his brother afterwards, just in time to see his brother killed by one of the loan shark's men. He overpowered the killer easily. Jack decided to dedicate his life to helping others, and formed a non-profit foundation called Kickers, Inc. to help people with unusual problems. He was joined in this project by his wife Darlene and several of his teammates. However, an unscrupulous CIA agent began blackmailing him with threats of getting him banned from football. Although he cooperated at first, running several missions for the CIA, he eventually resisted and was blacklisted. After the destruction of Pittsburgh, he enlisted in the U.S. military and became known as the All-American. He is given the rank of captain and a costume reminiscent of Captain America without the mask, and placed in charge of one of the units of paranormals who were recruited during the paranormal draft. He takes part in the mission to South Africa that almost set off a paranormal and nuclear war. Jack is among the New Universe superheroes who fights with Quasar in the Starblast series, where the New Universe Earth is brought into the main Marvel Universe. Jack is on his Earth when the Living Tribunal seals it off from the rest of that universe. In New Universal, Shockfront No. 1, Giovanni Jack. Magnacon's powers manifest for the first time during a televised game, he struck and killed opposing player Michael Hathaway with a single blow. This immediately brought him to the attention of Project Spitfire, as well as the other existing superhumans. Spitfire's Philip L. Voigt then attempted to kill Magnaconte, detonating a suitcase bomb that destroyed the building Magnaconte was being detained in. Jack Magniconte is a superb athlete, combatant, and martial artist. After being experimented on, Jack gained superhuman strength, durability, agility, reflexes, and speed. He can run up to 40 miles per hour, 64 kilometers per hour for as long as 10 minutes before beginning to tire, and he is bulletproof to indirect shots. 
Jack can also lift up to one ton and wears a bulletproof uniform and helmet. He is a skilled pilot and uses a variety of automatic weapons, preferably guns. <laughs> Liz Allen Alpha Alpha Andrew Andy Maguire is a fictional character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. The character first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man. Andy Maguire was a student at Midtown High School, the same school Peter Parker attended, but unlike Parker, he was not a good student. He was completely ignored by everyone and his parents did not care about his schoolwork and neglected him. One day during a demonstration at Horizon Labs, a problem arises during Parker's demonstration of Parker particles. Despite the attempts of Peter Parker and others to protect the class, Andy is forced to save a girl named Chrissy in the ensuing chaos, causing him to be struck by the energy himself. Instead of being fatally injured, he miraculously survived and Andrew gains the ability to create a hyperkinetic form of energy tied to the forces of the universe. After being tested by many scientists and superheroes Mr. Fantastic, Hank Pym, Iron Man, and Beast, Andy became the new spokesman of Horizon Labs at Mr. Fantastic's suggestion to Max Model. He was also being trained by Peter Parker's superheroic alter ego Spider-Man. The following days, Andy continued his superheroic career with the help of Spider-Man, although receiving a bad reception from the citizens. After observing Alpha, Jackal kidnapped the boy along with his parents, in order to create clones of him and build an army to control the world. Spider-Man managed to track Andy to the villain's lair, where they learned Andy's DNA was not affected by the accident, leading his newly formed clones to be powerless. After failing to absorb Alpha's power, the Jackal escaped. In the aftermath, he was emancipated from his parents. After he was called by Spider Man to help the Avengers to battle Terminus, Alpha used his powers carelessly, causing many aircraft to shut down, risking the lives of the passengers and people in the ground. After the Avengers managed to rescue the various passengers, Spider Man, his Aunt May, and her husband Jay Jameson from Jameson's malfunctioning private jet, Peter decided that Alpha was too irresponsible to wield the powers he had. He used Terminus Energy Lance to deflect Alpha's energy to build an engine which took a huge portion of Andy's power. Spider-Man tells Andy that he will return to his parents and he will be attending high school once more. His powers are still growing, and maybe, he can be a hero again, just not as Alpha. Six months after these events took place, Andy's parents divorced and Andy, along with his mother, moved in with Andy's grandmother. Later, the superior Spider-Man Dr. Octopus mind in Peter Parker's body returned 10% of Alpha's abilities to him in order to harness Parker particles to make himself more powerful. Alpha then attempted to save a woman from a mugger, but accidentally crushed the man's skull. After admitting the mugger to the Pittsburgh University Medical Center, Alpha destroys an elemental parasite, preventing it from demolishing a steel plant. He then, after saving his friend Susan Soupson, Rice from a restaurant fire, realizes the Parker particles have enhanced his senses to the point that he can hear and see everything on Earth. He then visits the mugger, who awakes and vows revenge, later mutating into a tumor-like beast named Zeta. After defeating an ex-Stark International engineer named the Miller with Thor's assistance, he attempts to remove the rampaging Zeta from the hospital, but is alerted that his mother's home is burning down, at the behest of Boss Cohen, Pittsburgh's top crime boss. After saving his mother, he enlists Spider-Man to help destroy Zeta, but fails to completely destroy all the cancerous tissue, allowing Zeta to escape. Then, after an attempt on Soupson's life by one of Cohen's hitmen, Alpha threatens to kill Cohen, but is deterred by the fact that Cohen knows about the mugger. He then tells Alpha to not prevent any of Cohen's crimes, or he'll release the information to the media. Andy then reveals his identity to his only other friend Duncan Kilgore and attempts to make a name for himself as protector of Pittsburgh. 
Due to his exposure to the Parker particles, Andy is now capable of continually recharging massive amounts of cosmic energy, which he can release in the form of energy blasts, super strength, super speed, force fields, telekinesis, matter manipulation, and flight. So far, however, he's only able to manifest one of his abilities at a time instead of all at once. The superior Spider-Man noted that it is possible that Alpha is the only being capable of utilizing Parker particles without turning into a parasitic monster, or Zeta. Comic book resources placed him as one of the superheroes Marvel wants you to forget. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Alpha the Ultimate Mutant. Alpha the Ultimate Mutant is a fictional character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. Alpha the Ultimate Mutant first appeared in the Defenders Hash 15 to 16, September to October 1974, and was created by Len Vine and Sal Buscema. Alpha is a being artificially created by Magneto, a prominent mutant in the Marvel Universe. Following an epic battle with the Avengers, Magneto is imprisoned in the center of Earth. Magneto manages to escape and propels himself towards the surface. On the way, he finds the underground ruins of a long lost technologically advanced civilization in New Mexico. Using the machinery and books he finds among the ruins, he began bioengineering, the ultimate mutant. Professor X telepathically detects that Magneto and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants are active in the area of the Carlsbad Caverns, and he summons the Defenders to launch an attack against them. Magneto and the Brotherhood manage to repel the Defenders for enough time to allow the engineering of Alpha to be completed. Alpha emerges as an oversized humanoid of subhuman intelligence he was characterized as Neolithic. Initially he is only capable of creating force fields as a reflex, and are blindly following Magneto's orders. However, each time he uses his powers, Alpha's cranium widens, causing an increase to his intellect. Magneto has Alpha teleport him and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants to the United Nations headquarters. When his demands for world rulership are turned down, Magneto orders Alpha to telekinetically lift the Secretariat building and suspend it in midair. After the Defenders attack the Brotherhood, Alpha was coerced by Magneto to retaliate in various means, including transforming the concrete pavement into autonomous rock men, transforming the Hulk into a stone statue. Telekinetically spinning the airborne Nighthawk in the air until he lost consciousness Fusing the feet of Valkyrie to the ground th rampant use of his powers eventually elevate Alpha's awareness to a superhuman level. Persuaded by Professor X, he telepathically probes both the Brotherhood of Mutants and the Defenders in order to discover which team was evil. Understanding that Magneto had fooled him into committing malicious acts, Alpha punishes his erstwhile allies by regressing them to infancy. He also restores the United Nations building complex and erases the event from the minds of all onlookers. Finally, declaring himself too evolved to remain on Earth, Alpha transforms himself to a streak of light and leaves to explore the universe. Quasar briefly glimpses Alpha, first on the Stranger's lab world, and then during his journeys in the cosmos. From what Quasar saw, Alpha seems to be paired with another highly evolved humanoid named Futurist. Alpha the Ultimate Mutant possesses telepathy and vast powers enabling him to transmute the elements, reconstruct matter, reverse the aging process, project force fields, teleport himself and others, fly, and survive in the vacuum of space. He possesses telekinetic powers which are enough to lift a 50-story skyscraper and the surrounding land into the air. His powers are not without limits and are presumably weaker than those of the Stranger. Alpha the Ultimate Mutant originally had a hulking form which likely possessed great strength but lacked enough intelligence to obey commands. Within a few hours, Alpha's cranium and brain grew in size and evolved into a being of great intellect with a form to match. Alpha the Ultimate Mutant stands at 10 feet tall, although he can alter his form at will.
Alpha the Ultimate Mutant was seen in the X-Men theme where he was seen charging towards the X-Men with the mutants on Magneto's side. He later appeared in the episode, Beyond Good and Evil, PT. 4, amongst the psychic mutants. <laughs> Amatsu Makaboshi American Ace American Ace Perry Webb, is a fictional character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics in the Golden Age of Comic Books. He first appeared in the uncirculated Motion Picture Funnies Weekly No. 1 starring in his own story in 1939. The character would make his first public appearance when his strip was reprinted and later continued in Marvel Mystery Comics No. 2 and No. 3. American Dream American Eagle Topic Americop Americop Bartholomew Bart Gallows is a fictional vigilante appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. Americop first appeared in Captain America first series number no. 428 June 1994 and was created by Mark Gruenwald and Dave Hoover. Bart Gallows was born in Sugar Land, Texas and later became a police officer in Houston, Texas. Disillusioned at the law's inability to protect society from crime, he resigned from the force and became a vigilante named Americop. He travels across America and uses a police scanner to track down criminals. He is not above executing the criminals he thinks deserve said fate. He sometimes takes money from the drug trafficking criminals he battles, keeping half and donating the rest to drug rehabilitation programs. Americop finds himself in conflict with Captain America while trying to bring down a child exploitation ring. Captain America is appalled by his brutality. Americop's investigation led him to the New Orleans mansion of indestructible munitions magnate Damon Dran. Although initially subdued by a gas grenade attack and imprisoned alongside Captain America, he manages to break free. During the fight, he kills several of Dran's mercenaries. During the resulting fight, he shoots down Dran's helicopter. Americop believes Dran died during the crash when the criminal in fact survived. After the superhero Civil War, Americop is a target on the Thunderbolts' most wanted list. Norman Osborn sends Penance and Bullseye to battle Americop, with the secret hope the vigilante will kill the two as both haven't been worth the trouble. Instead, the two crash Americop's truck and Bullseye causes Penance's stored-up energy to be unleashed which fries 80% of the vigilante's synaptic nerve endings. He later died presumably from his injuries and had his uniform and code name copied by a private security force called the Americops run by Keen Industries. A formidable martial artist and strategist, Americop carries .45 caliber pistols, a baton and a fixed blade tactical knife. He wears bulletproof Kevlar body armor, a ballistic face mask and a customized cap which doubles as a throwing weapon. His costume includes a device that absorbs ambient electrical energy and uses it to increase his strength to low superhuman levels. His pickup truck has a roof-mounted light bar, police siren, public address system and bulletproof armor and windows. Topic: <laughs> Amphibian. Amphibian Kingsley Rice is the name of two fictional characters in the Marvel Multiverse, members of alternate versions of the fictional Squadron Supreme. The original character was created as a pastiche of Aquaman by Steve Englehart and George Perez, and first appeared in The Avengers, Vol. 1, No. 148, June 1976. The series Supreme Power featured a female version of the character, also named Kingsley Rice. 
This version was created by J. Michael Straczynski and Gary Frank, and first appeared in Supreme Power No. 2, November 2003. Topic. Amphibian Topic. Amphibious Topic. Anachronism Anachronism was created by Dennis Hopeless and Kev Walker, and first appeared in Avengers Arena No. 1. He is one of 16 teenagers kidnapped by Arcade and forced to fight to the death. After escaping, he and some of the other survivors train with Madame Mask. <laughs> Anaconda Anarchist <laughs> 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 Topic Ancient One Topic Andromeda Topic Anil Anil is a scroll princess and the heir to the scroll empire. The character first appeared in Fantastic Four No. 37, and was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. She often opposed her father Emperor Doric VII's policies, preferring peace to his aggressive military policies. She falls in love with Warlord Morat, but he is executed for treason by firing squad after a failed coup d'état against Emperor Doric VII. She leaps in front of the weapon fire in an attempt to save him, but the invisible woman surrounds her with a force field and saves her life. The Super Scroll desires her, but she is not interested in the least. In an attempt to win her hand, he captures the Kree Captain Marvel, the Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver, but her father interprets it as an attempt to usurp him and imprisons him instead. Anel and the Cree Man fall in love and have an illicit relationship, leading to the birth of future young Avenger Hulkling. The Emperor orders the baby put to death as soon as he realizes who the father is, but Anel has her nurse smuggle the child off-world, and he ends up on Earth. Galactus later consumes the Scroll Throne world, and Anel is among the billions who perish. Topic. Anel in other media Anel appears in the 1967 Fantastic Four TV show episode, "'Behold, a Distant Star'", voiced by Ginny Tyler. Anel appears in the 1994 Fantastic Four TV show episode, also entitled, "'Behold, a Distant Star'", voiced this time by Mary Kay Bergman. Anel appears in the Super Hero Squad show episode, Another Order of Evil, PT, 1, voiced by Tara Strong. <laughs> Angar the Screamer Angar the Screamer David Allen Angar, also known as Scream, is a supervillain, created by Steve Gerber, Gene Colan, and John Tartaglioni, who first appeared in Daredevil No. 100 June 1973. David Angar volunteers for an experiment that subjects his vocal cords to hypersound, granting him the ability to scream loudly and cause hallucinations. He becomes an assassin and tries to kill Daredevil and Black Widow. He later enters a relationship with similarly powered screaming Mimi. He is shot during a robbery and dies. The Fixer takes Angar's body and experiments on his larynx, resurrecting Angar as the abstract sound being Scream. Scream joins the Redeemers and his form is dispersed by Graviton. He manages to restore himself and goes on a rampage until Songbird disperses him for good. Topic. Angar the Screamer in other media David A. Angar appears in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode, "'One of Us'", 
portrayed by Jeff Daniel Phillips. As a result of an experimental cancer treatment, Angar has a voice that renders any living thing catatonic. He is freed from his imprisonment by Calvin Zarbo and his allies Carla Fay Gideon, Wendell Levi, and Francis Noche where they form the Slicing Talons. When at a football stadium in Manitowoc, Wisconsin upon Anger's muzzle being removed, Calvin and the others put on headphones while Angar unleashes his voice attack causing everyone in the radius of his voice to suffer catatonia to the point where any flying birds crash to the ground. During the confrontation with Phil Coulson's group, Angar was prepared to use his voice again until Gordon shows up and teleports Callaway. Coulson took the opportunity to knock out Angar. Topic: Angel. Topic: Thomas Holloway. Topic: Simon Holloway. Topic: Warren Worthington III. Topic: Angel Dust. Topic: Angela. Topic: Dirk Anger. Topic: Ani Mater. Topic: Annex. Topic: Annihilus. Topic: Inoli. Topic: Answer. The answer is the name of three connected fictional comic book characters appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. Topic: Aaron Nicholson. Aaron Nicholson first appeared in Peter Parker: The Spectacular Spider-Man number 92. He is a criminal genius and a former member of the Kingpin's criminal organization. He is also a former hitman in the Las Vegas division of Hydra and was empowered by the laboratory machines of Dr. Farley Stilwell's brother Dr. Harlan Stilwell where he became the answer. The answer studies Spider-Man's powers, and then attacks Spider-Man and the Black Cat to test the limits of their powers. He then kidnaps the Black Cat to misdirect Spider-Man's attention as he steals Silverman's body from the police mall, and assisted the Kingpin in partially restoring Silverman's life. He then kidnapped Dagger in hopes that her powers would cure the Kingpin's ailing wife. Silverman rampages mindlessly, to end the rampage, the answer sacrifices his corporeal form and converts himself to energy to revive Dagger, who possesses Silverman's life force, the answer later telepathically contacts Dr. Octopus who restores his corporeal existence. The answer ends up fighting with Octavius and is defeated by him. He later appears in the raft where he escapes but is captured by Toxin. It is later revealed that he had been feigning bad luck in order to reunite with his unrequited love Ruby Thursday, before her body is killed by Bullseye. During the Civil War, war crimes storyline, he is seen among an army of supervillains organized by Hammerhead that is captured by Iron Man and S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents later, the answer is a self-confessed loser at the wake of Stilt Man. Almost all of the supervillains at the wake were the victims of murder, attempted murder. The Punisher disguises himself as a barman, poisons drinks, and then blows up the bar. Answer has since been hired by the Hood to take advantage of the split in the superhero community caused by the Superhuman Registration Act. 
He helps them fight the new Avengers but is taken down by Doctor Strange. He appeared in Brand New Day as one of the villains in the bar confronting Spider-Man. He was one of many prisoners who escaped from the raft at the start of the secret invasion. He is one among many supervillains who joined the Hood's crime syndicate and attacked an invading Skrull force. He joins with the Hood's gang in an attack on the New Avengers, who were expecting the Dark Avengers instead. Ansa leads a group of the Hood's gang, would go to war with Mr. Negative over the ownership of various criminal operations in Chinatown. He was seen during the Siege of Asgard as part of the Hood crime syndicate, during the search for Tony Stark. Arc, Ansa rejoined Hood's gang and assisted in the attack on Castle Doom. The first Ansa underwent genetic manipulation to grant him the ability to develop any power needed in a certain situation. For example, if surrounded by thugs, he will gain superhuman strength and durability, allowing him to defeat them. In another situation, he may obtain pyrokinesis or the ability to turn himself into pure energy. Flight may be an ability that is always active. Other than that, at rest or not in any sort of situation, he will display no abilities. The powers he manifests typically last for five minutes, and he can display up to two separate powers at once. He also has superhuman intelligence and intuition. The answer wears body armor that was created with the help of the Kingpin's scientists. The armor is coated with a friction-eliminating chemical that allows him to slip from any grasp or prevent anything from adhering to him. <laughs> David Ferrari After Aaron Nicholson's death, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent David Ferrari took the name of Answer in Captain America Vol. 3 No. 42. He was a former agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well as a member of the U.S. Army and Furnace. He was also the former ally of the Crimson Dynamo and the brother of Connie. He led a mission to an AIM base to prevent the release of the Omega compound, however he released two drops to destroy the base. He later uses drugs to control Nick Fury, at which point he had allied himself with the Crimson Dynamo in attempt to steal missiles from Karmastan to take over the world. He was opposed by Captain America. Topic. Unnamed criminal After Aaron Nicholson lost his physical form, his gear was sold to Roderick Kingsley who gave it to an unknown criminal. He was present when Hobgoblin who was actually Roderick Kingsley's butler Claude led his forces into battle against the Goblin King's Goblin Nation. After Hobgoblin was killed by Goblin King, Ansa was among the villains that defected to the Goblin Nation. Following Spider Man's victory over the Goblin King, Ansa was with the other former Hobgoblin minions at the bar with no name where they encounter Electro. Topic. Anthem Topic. Ant-Man Topic Hank Pym Topic Scott Lang Topic Eric O'Grady Topic Anti Venom Topic Eddie Brock Topic Unnamed Host Topic Flash Thompson Topic Apache Kid Topic Ape Man Topic 
Monk Kiefer Topic Roy McVeigh Topic Unnamed version Topic Apex Apex is the name of different characters in Marvel Comics. Topic Apex Earth seven hundred and twelve. Apex is a super intelligent ape in the Squadron Supreme universe. The character, created by Mark Runewald, presumably as a pastiche of Gorilla Grodd, first appeared in Squadron Supreme No. 5 in January 1986. Within the context of the stories, Apex was a member of the Institute of Evil before joining the Squadron. She later fell into a coma. Topic. Apex Marvel Apes. An unrelated Apex, created by Carl Kessel and Ramon Barks, appeared in Marvel Apes No. 1. This version is a monkey that wears a wrestler mask that enables him to turn into a super-powered gorilla. Topic. Apocalypse Topic. Apollo Topic Aquarius Topic Aqueduct Topic Arabian Night Topic Abdul Kamar Topic Naveed Hashem Topic Aragorn Topic Arcade Topic Arcana Topic Squadron Supreme Arcana Jones, created by J. M. Demetais and Don Perlin, first appeared in the Defenders No. 112 October 1982. Arcana's magical abilities allow her to become a professional crime fighter to support her family, and joins the Squadron Supreme. With the Squadron, she travels to a different universe. When they return, Arcana discovers the nature of magic changed while she was away and that she will have to relearn all of her skills. Instead, she chooses to retire from adventuring to be with her family. Topic. Supreme Power This version of the character, created by J. Michael Straczynski and Gary Frank, first appeared in Supreme Power No. 18 April 2005. Arcana Jones is able to observe and affect parallel quantum dimensions. During a fight with Hyperion, the interaction between their powers causes them to travel two years into the future. Topic Arclight Topic Aries Topic Ariel Eleven Ariel Eleven is an extraterrestrial mutant. Created by Joe Duffy and Kerry Gamble, the character first appeared in Fallen Angels No. 1. Like others of her race, she is able to teleport. 
On Earth, she encounters the mutant criminal Vanisher and joins the group of adolescents who work for him as thieves, known as the Fallen Angels. She later allies herself with the X-Men. Ares Marcus Lassiter Topic Grover Raymond Topic LMD Topic Oscar Gordon Topic Ecliptic Topic Thanos Topic Marauders Topic Arisham the Judge Topic Arkan Topic Armadillo Topic Armless Tiger Man Topic Armor Topic Armory Topic Aaron Aaron the Rogue Watcher is a fictional character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. He is the nephew of Uatu. Aaron first appeared in Captain Marvel No. 39 and was created by Steve Englehart and Al Milgram. Aaron originally dwelt upon the Watcher's homeworld with the other members of his race. He observed Captain Marvel and Rick Jones battling Mad Eye, and then attended the trial of Uatu. Aaron was seen alongside Uatu again later. Aaron decided to forsake the Watcher's oath and actively participate in events on Earth, becoming an instigator and manipulator. He set Dragon Man against She Hulk and She Thing, and obtained cell samples from the Thing and She Thing. Aaron observed the Fantastic Four battling Graviton, and witnessed the events of Inferno. Aaron was in turn observed by Necrodamus. Aaron then joined forces with the Frightful Four against the Fantastic Four, but soon quit the Frightful Four. Aaron created clones of the Fantastic Four and She Thing, and imprisoned the real Fantastic Four and Frightful Four members in suspended animation, and watched their dreams. He replaced the real Fantastic Four with his clones, and set them against the Mole Man. Aaron continued to engineer adventures for his clones, causing him to appear as criminals. The clones battled the Avengers and Doctor Strange, and were ultimately defeated by the real Fantastic Four after the originals broke free. Aaron settled for watching the dreams of the clones instead. When the entire species of the Watchers faced extinction at the hands of the Celestials, Aaron planned to plunge either Earth's solar system or its galaxy, the narration is not entirely clear, into a pocket universe, which he intended to live on in. He even collaborated with Dark Raider, the Mr. Fantastic of Earth 944, to further his goals. However, his plan was thwarted by the expanded Fantastic Four and their allies, and Aaron was reduced to energy by his uncle Uatu. For this action, Uatu was stripped of his position as a Watcher. Uatu believed that Aaron's energies would serve as the core around which to create a new one. The sentient repository of all the Watcher's knowledge, whose predecessor had been destroyed by the Celestial Exeter the Exterminator, as a member of the Watchers, the level of Aaron's physical and mental abilities are unknown, and potentially incalculable by human standards. 
He has the ability to manipulate cosmic energy for various effects, including the ability to convert his body into energy for travel through hyperspace, and projection of cosmic energy as concussive force, molecular manipulation of matter, interdimensional teleportation, creation of force fields, levitation, size transformations, alteration of his physical appearance, and enhancement of his physical attributes. He possesses virtual immortality, bolstered by treatment with Delta rays, though watchers can die by losing the will to live. He has also developed his vast psionic powers through training, and his powers include telepathy, illusion casting, and energy manipulation powers. Aaron has access to various alien artifacts and technology as needed. Through unknown means, Aaron had managed to create a special armor that shields him from detection by his fellow watchers. Arsenal Arsenic Artemis Asbestos Man Topic Mike Asher Topic Asmodius Topic Asp Topic Astra Topic Imperial Guard Astra is a member of the Shi'ar Imperium's Imperial Guard. The character, created by Chris Claremont and Dave Cockrum, first appeared in Uncanny X-Men No. 107. Astra is a founding member of the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. She and the Guard first clash with the X-Men and Starjammers, on behalf of Deacon and Davin Shakari, over the fate of the Shia Empress Lilandra Neramani. After the battle, Lilandra takes over as Majestrix, and the Guard swears allegiance to her. When Deathbird becomes Empress, Astrid commands the entire Imperial Guard to fight the combined forces of the Starjammers and Excalibur on Earth so that she could claim the power of the Phoenix Force for herself. The Guard are forced to retreat when Deathbird is put in danger. Astra has the ability to become intangible, allowing her to pass through solid objects. She can also use her power offensively, phasing her hand into her opponent and becoming partly solid, which gives them a physical shock and renders them unconscious. Topic. Brotherhood Astra is a mutant created by Alan Davis and first appearing in Uncanny X-Men No. 366. She is one of Magneto's first recruits from his original Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. She does not share Magneto's goals, and the two part ways as enemies. Years later, she revives a mindwiped Magneto and clones him. Astra orders the clone to kill the original, but the clone loses the battle and joins the X-Men under the name. Joseph. Astra later uses him against Magneto and the X-Men. Astra later recreates Joseph without memories and programs him to hate humankind. She also creates mutated clones of other Brotherhood members. The Stepford Cuckoos uncover Astra's collaboration with Christopher Bach, president of the organization Humans Now, in order to restore fear to Magneto's name. Magneto defeated Joseph and his clone Brotherhood, but Astra escapes. Topic: Vance Astro. Topic: Astronomer. Topic: Atalanta. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Athena. Topic: Atlas. Topic: Atuma. Topic: Atom. Atom, also known as Demogorge, is a being in the Marvel Universe. The character, created by Alan Zelenetz, first appeared in Thor Annual No. 10 in 1982. Within the context of the stories, Atom is the son of the entity known as the Demiurge and the Elder God Gaia. A golden humanoid imbued with the power of the sun itself, Atom kills the warring Elder Gods and, absorbing their life force, is changed by their evil energies and devolves into a huge, hulking demonic being, Demogorge, the God Eater. Only Chorthan and Set survive by fleeing into alternate dimensions. With Gaia the only Elder God remaining, the God Eater sheds the Elder God's energies and becomes Atom, journeying to the Sun and hibernating there. During this long period of hibernation, Atom takes on the identity of Amun Ra, and forms the Ogdode, the primordial gods of ancient Egypt. Thousands of years later, a group of eight death gods from various pantheons, including Hela, Pluto, Seth, and non death god Mephisto, combine their mystical might to join all the hells into one vast dimension. This act forces the re emergence and intervention of the Demogorge, who consumed all but the fleeing Hela. A champion from each pantheon is sent to stop Demogorge and prevent further disaster. Led by Thor, the champions find the God Eater and battle it. Demogorge is defeated by Thor, who plunges into one of its orifices and attacks the God Eater's inner workings. Damaged beyond repair, the entity can no longer contain the energies it has consumed and releases all the previously consumed gods, and restores the Hells to their rightful dimensions. During the Secret Invasion storyline, the alien scrolls invade Earth at the behest of their deities, Kleban and Slagert. A cadre of gods consisting of Hercules, Snowbird, Amatsu Makaboshi, and Ajak is formed to combat the scroll gods, with Atom joining the Earthly Pantheon at the request of Horus. He compares himself to a shepherd defending his flock, which he will one day eat. During the confrontation, Atom is killed after trying to devour Slagert, who tears him apart from the inside. Later, after Thor is slain battling the evil serpent, his divine soul travels to an afterlife for gods, where he joins many other deities who appear to have died and are all on their way to be devoured by Demogorge, apparently a being such as he can never truly be destroyed. Nevertheless, Thor defeats him by smashing his heart after entering his body, and escapes him once again. Orin Aurora Avalanche Topic <laughs> Awesome Android Equals equals Azazel <laughs>